Hey guys, Rusty here, and today we are talking Atlas bipods. Nearly hit myself in the face. This video is brought to you by Scoped Out. Scoped Out is a website in Australia focusing primarily on optics, including Vortex, Steiner, Burris, Falcon, and a number of other brands, as well as the accessories to go with it, like spur mounts, LaRue mounts, and also other accessories like Atlas bipods. The Atlas bipod is a really good upgrade for any rifle. It gives you a really good solid shooting platform, it's lightweight, versatile, and uh, comes in a range of options. But sometimes those product models can be a little confusing. BT46, 47, BT65, LW17, Cal2, what do they all mean? Well, that is what we're gonna cover off now. This one here is the V8 model. This is the original Atlas bipod. This is what kicked it all off. But before we get into the bipod, I wanna talk about mounting options. This is a stock standard mount here. If you buy a model that doesn't have any other designation behind the model number, say a BT10, it's gonna come with this. Two bolts that go across onto a Picagini rail, all done up by hand. Now these are a rock solid mount, but they're not super versatile, particularly if you're gonna be moving this bipod from one gun to the other, or need to drop it during a PRS stage. The ideal setup, if you are using a Picatinny rail to mount to, is this one here, the LW17, that is a Picatinny mount with a quick throw lever. So you do that, comes off, do that back up, locks down hard. You can adjust the tension of it using this screw here. This is the way to go. It's always a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth the money. This mount here is the NC or the no clamp. This is a generic base you can utilize to put on an ARCA mount on uh, some other sort of firearm or chassis designated mounting bracket. This is excellent if you have the mounting of the bracket already organized and this is just folding onto the bottom. So into the models themselves. This is the V8, the VT10 model, and this is the original bipod. I'm gonna cover off a number of features that are on this bipod, but also shared with all the Atlas range. All the bipods have five positions for the legs to go in. Forward, 45 front, 90, 45 back, and fully back. You'll find that across the entire range of the bipods. The other thing you'll find across the range of the bipods is the way the legs lock in. You pull this down and that will allow you to run it down the inner leg, release it, and then it'll go into whichever the closest notch is. That one there, if you need a little bit shorter, that one there. They also have interchangeable feet, so you can push the detent in there, pop in some other, these are the spike cleat feet, gives you a different surface to work on. Now all the Atlas bipods have a 30 degree cant built in. What that'll allow you to do is to level the gun out this way or this way. You've got 15 degrees on either side and that means that you're going to be shooting flat and nice and solid. I struggle to do that without a rifle attached to it. It's fairly tight, fairly firm, but as soon as you've got some leverage on it, it will move. Now most of the Atlas bipods will have 30 degrees of pan, which will allow you to twist the rifle from side to side. Again, 15 degrees either way. Now we allow you to search for targets if need be or shoot something on the move. A couple of things that are unique to the V8 series. The biggest one here is the rotating legs. For field use, this is no big deal. You're generally gonna lock that in or use those cleat spikes or something like that, and that thing's not gonna move. But if you're shooting off a bench or on a flat surface, sometimes, as you put pressure on it, that leg will tend to rotate, and it will allow you to actually walk the gun down range a little bit. So as you're loading up the bipod, it will start getting away from you. That may be of no issue to you, and that also may be a big concern for you. That's one of the biggest changes that happens from this to the next model. The only other benefit of the rotating leg is that you can go out to sporting events and do this. Not recommended. This is the PSR model. This is the BT46. I'll show you the 47 in a moment. This year's got all the same features as the BT10 had, or the V8 series. Again, the five positions for the leg, the way the leg adjusts. Again, you can swap the feet out. All pretty simple there. One of the big changes in here is the legs do not rotate on this model. They're locked in. You also have a slightly larger um, inner leg, and particularly the locking point here. One other thing that you'll notice on the bipods when you use them is that the BT-10 has a little bit of slop as you push into it, a little bit of a locker. You can see on this bipod there's actually reinforcements front and rear in addition to the BT-10 and that will reduce that slop out so you won't be sort of pushing in and locking it in. Now again that's a bit of personal preference. I like this way that doesn't feel to be so much movement back. Aside from that everything's pretty similar between this and a BT-10. They're both an 8 to 11 inch footprint in terms of the width. They also have a 5 to 9 inch elevation in the legs. 
I mentioned another model in this PSR series and that's the BT47. As you can see, the only difference here is the length of the leg. Now, if you had this one here, the BT46 or the BT10, the V8 series, you can get leg extensions to bring that leg out and then they click in, click out, same way that the feet do. If you're unsure about height, this is a really good option to go for with these added on. The latest and greatest from Atlas is the Cow 2 bike. The biggest thing you'll notice is the difference between the two is this bracket here. It actually gives it a wider stance, something more stable. It increases the footprint from eight inches to nine inches with the legs at the lower setting. The other big change with this is there is no pan feature. Now in the other models, the V8 and the PSR, this is how you do up the tension on the cant and pan. But because this doesn't have pan, they've gone with the podlock type system. It's a very quick way of going from something that's fairly loose with your adjustment, twisting that, and now being rock solid with no movement. This will actually be pretty comfortable for people coming across from the Harris bipods because they don't have the pan feature either. Everything else is the same. Again, the legs and the adjustment there, the, the can again is still 15 degrees. It also sits the legs a little bit further forward from the mounting bracket. And then we have this. This is the 5H and this is the beast of a bipod. Ideally used for prone, Bigger guns, generally heavier recalling, but you can use it on something lighter, of course. Again, the legs are very similar in that they've got the five positions and the way they lock up. They're just bigger and chunkier and, and they actually do take different feet, uh, but still replaceable with other options, cleats and spikes and such. The other thing is it's a much wider stance on the bipod as opposed to the other series like that. It also has a slower center of gravity, so the apex point is going to be above your ball line. It's generally going to be really comfortable to use, particularly for your real long range stuff. One of the significant features is this part in here. I'm just going to take this screw out. This bipod still has the cant and pan features. So you see at the moment, we can cant it and adjust that cant, and we can twist the pan also. Tension is set by the tension screw underneath here, but it's also got a locking mechanism. So you can take that off, click it out, lock it back in to whatever position you want, and that will really lock it up nice and tight. Or if you want it to be a little bit looser, again, undo that lever, wind it back the other way, lock it back up, and that now will float around as much as you need it to. This screw that I took out before comes with it. If you screw that in halfway, it'll lock the panning feature. If you go all the way in, it'll lock both the pan and the can feature on this bipod. I wonder if you can juggle these. Yeah, yeah, somebody could juggle, could juggle them. That somebody's not me. Ooh. Perfect. <laughs> Quick rundown. V8, rotating legs. PSR series with the non-rotating legs, less slop in the lockup, and also a little bit thicker on the inner leg as well. The cow series, which ditches the pan option, goes with the pod lock instead. Also throws the bipod a little bit further forward, or I guess a little bit further back if you need to. Or the big one, the 5H, with the lower center of gravity and the wider legs. You also have this different mechanism here for the pan and the cant. Which one do you think suits you? So guys, that's it. That's a look at the Atlas bipod line. Make sure to check out Scoped Out, particularly if you want to pick up one of these bipods. And we'll catch you in the next video. Hey guys, Rusty here. And today we're talking Atlas. What was that? Well, the big one, the 5H with the lower center of gravity and the much wider blah, blah, blah. Or the big one, the 5H with the blah, 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 blah. Or the big one, the 5H with the lower center cent. Or the big one, the 5H with the lower center of gravity. Different setup for the adjustment and a much wider spread on the legs. Today's website. Today's website. That's a brief overview of the accu accuracy first.